Hi everybody, I'm Chris and today we are taking a look at this exciting parametric pattern where we have two main patterns. One is the open one and one is the closed one. So we have a perfect transition from these holes to smaller holes to a pretty decent flat surface. Okay, let's start with a plane. And this plane we will tessellate a little bit down, maybe four by four that seems like it's enough then i select the center one and make it circular and i just scale it a little bit up so that my circle is pretty huge and i extrude it in the center and maybe also extrude it a little bit in the back and to the inside so i get a cool volume and i delete this maybe make here some little more volume and then I just bevel these edges to get this shape that's not so bad maybe let's make it a little bit bigger looks cool delete the history make a duplicate of it and I just move it a little bit up and here I just change the inner part of my pattern I just change the inner part of my pattern so I make these smaller that the hole gets a little bit smaller like this that's cool maybe let's optimize the bevel here a little bit it's really really important to don't delete these edges and make them new you just have to work with the edges you have created here that's highly important for the for the blend shape tool we use later on okay cool this is our p1 blend one and our p1 blend 2 so next we also need the pattern that's closed so we just duplicate these delete these inner edges maybe make something like this I think that's nearly okay for our for our case. Also duplicate this and now make the transition complete. In my opinion, I just want to scale the circle smaller. And I also want to make it flat like this. Look that there are no overlapping edges. Okay, so this is our first transition and this is our second transition. Maybe let's move this out a little bit. So okay let's group it together p1 let's rename these to p2 p1 blend and p2 blend 2 let's group it and hide this for a second so next i just grab the open one and I go to the mesh and to the mesh blend shape and here I go to the mesh blend deformer and what I have to do is I have to take this blend tool that I have created and put it in the blend mesh this is what I do with the middle mouse button hold it I put it here and now I have the transition of these two shapes what I now do is I go to frame one 
and I set a keyframe. I go to frame 50 and I make a keyframe with the blend value one. And now I just repeat the process. I hide this and unhide my P2. Center this. It's later on a little bit easier to use. I also take the down one, go to the blend mode, take the blend deformer, put in with the middle mouse button our blend shape here and we can see it morphs perfectly. Now we go to frame 50, make a keyframe with the value zero and then we go to 100 and scale it up and set the keyframe here. So here we use the time range between 50 and 100 and with the P1 we use the time range between 50 and zero. Okay, let's make the P1 visible again. We go to frame one, select it, go to the mesh editor. With the object P1 blend one, we make create mesh network and let's just hide this. We don't have to see this anymore. We go to the mesh distribute and you can see there are many, many numbers of parts that get created here, but we don't need them. We just need one. So just type in number one. Then we go to replicator and here we can crank up the number, set the C value to one because the size of my plane here is one. And I also want to go to the pattern here and set the X value to 0 0.5. So I have a little offset, it looks a little bit more cooler here. And maybe let's go down for not that high value uh, for the performance. And then we make one more replicator. And this replicator is our X replicator. So here we can put one in the X value and just scale it up here. So we have a cool pattern. Okay, now I can just select it and press three for getting the smooth preview. Looks cool. And now we just want to implement our animation. So I go to the plus sign and go to the time node. In the time node, I set the value from zero to 100. 100 and I use a strength fall off with the fall off object. And here I just make a right click create and set the strength mode to animation frame. So you can see it blends from our open pattern to our closed pattern. But it's not a 100% closed pattern because this is the P2 that we now have to implement. So I just go to the mesh time, close this for a little while to um, concentrate on the switching from the P1 to P2. And this is what we do with the mesh ID. And therefore we also have to implement our P2 object. So I click the mesh, go to repro and I middle mouse drag and drop the P2 blend one value in here. And with the ID, I now can uh, do different stuff. I, for example, can make some linear interpolation that, uh, the switch between, between our P1 and P2 is linear, or I can go to random or something else. But what I want is I want to go fixed and I want to fixed for, let's set number one. And I also want a fall off object for these. So go into fall off and create one. And now we can see, let's hide this one for a short time. With this fall off, I can steer now if pattern one or pattern two is used. And this is pretty, pretty cool because now I can activate my time back again and you can see the fading between these, these objects. I have the open one, it goes down to the closed one and then it jumps to P2 where it's closed and it's getting smoothed out. Now I can play around 
with my values here, uh, with the scale, for example. Or I can select both of them, maybe bring them a little bit more to the right, scale it, and you can see like the fading is uh, perfectly from big hole to smaller hole to flat to perfect flat. So that's it for today. I hope you can enjoy this and try your own patterns. See you next time.